The Texas Tech football team is looking for new leadership after a big announcement over the weekend. Coming up, we'll have the details on the firing of head coach Cliff Kingsbury. With graduation approaching, some students are hoping to find a job with their new degree. But others, the end of their college experience is only the first step to starting a business of their own. Find out how one campus group is helping making that vision a reality for some young, young entrepreneurs next. And with the university's busy events calendar beginning to slow down, we'll show you how you can still catch a special art exhibition here on campus before it's too late. This is the MCTV Weekday Update. Welcome to the Monday edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. I'm Aditya Sahasrabuddhi and you can also call me AD. And I'm Rebecca Nostroza. The Texas Tech Athletic Department has started a job search after another disappointing weekend by the Red Raider football team. That's right, Rebecca. After five seasons as head coach, Cliff Kingsbury was fired from his role with the Texas Tech football team. Yesterday morning, the athletic department made the announcement through a press release posted on texastech.com. According to the press release, Kingsbury was informed of the decision by the athletic director Kirby Hokut on Sunday morning following the team's loss to Baylor on Saturday. The loss was the fifth in a row for the Red Raiders in Big 12 play and the team finished with a 5-7 and seven losing record. Saturday's loss also guaranteed that the team would not be bowl eligible, making this year the third time in Kingsbury's five seasons that the Red Raiders would not continue in postseason play. Following yesterday's announcement, Hokut held a press conference at Jones AT&T Stadium where he addressed the media regarding Kingsbury dismissal. It's not based on one game. This type of decision is not based on one season. This decision was made, made based on a, a three-year pattern, a three-year pattern of inconsistency. You know, we didn't come here to win five six, five games for our football season to end in November. But there was a pattern of, of inconsistency that led us to this decision at, at this time. Since the football team will not be attending a bowl this year, Hokut did not appoint an interim coach to replace Kingsbury. Hokut also did not set a time limit for the coaching job search, but it is possible that a new hire could be made as early as next month. As AD just mentioned, Kingsbury firing came after a tough loss to the Baylor Bears on Saturday night. Tech started off strong, scoring 17 points in the first half. The Red Raiders took a three-point lead into halftime, but Baylor made adjustments and scored 14 unanswered points in the third quarter. Tech scored again early in the fourth quarter, but two interceptions by returning quarterback McLean Carter sealed the Red Raiders' fate. Tech lost to Baylor with a final score of 35-24. to 24. The loss ended the Red Raiders' season with a final overall record of 3-6 and six in conference play. Although the Red Raiders may not know who their next coach will be, their next game is set for August 31st, 2019 against Montana State at Jones AT&T Stadium. In other news, student entrepreneurs looking for their big break are relying on you to help make their ideas come to life. The Texas Tech Innovation Hub's annual Red Raider idea competition is currently underway. The competition gives students a chance to submit a 60-second pitch video explaining an idea for the chance to win $2,000 grand prize. Each of the pitch videos were then placed on the Innovation Hub site, and the members of the tech community are invited to view the videos and vote for their favorite idea. Voting for this year's competition started on November 1st and voting will close at midnight on November 30th. At the end of the competition, the idea with the most votes will receive a $2,000 cash prize. Second place receives $1,000 and third place idea will get $500. If you'd like to vote in this year's Red Raider idea competition, just visit innovationhub.ttu.edu and click on Red Raider idea competition. You can vote one time per day from now on until Friday. With the Thanksgiving holiday officially over, there are now less than three weeks left in the fall semester. With graduation just around the corner, one master's student is showcasing her skills through a unique exhibition. Photo Expo is an art installation that is currently on display in the art building. 
The display is a thesis exhibition created by Masters of Fine Arts candidate Amy Kim. In the exhibit, Kim examines how the production and display of photography determines how we view the images. The exhibit uses commercial items from trade conventions and advertisements to raise questions about photo photographic documentation, distribution of photos, and how we interact with digital imagery. Photo Expo is currently on display in the Art Building Studio Gallery from now until Sunday. If you would like to see the exhibit in person, you can stop by the gallery between now and Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., and on Sunday from noon to 4 p.m. All the arts buildings galleries are free and open to the public. It felt a lot like spring here on the Tech campus yesterday morning as cold front moved through the area and brought windy conditions back to the South Plains. That's true, Rebecca. Wind gusts reached nearly 50 miles per hour around 10 a.m. and after that, we saw a drop in temperatures from the 70 degree highs we saw on Saturday. We will continue to see a roller coaster of conditions as we head into the last week of classes. Let's take a look at the MCTV forecast. We have been seeing mostly sunny skies today on the MCTV tower cam. Temperatures have also been mild and the wind has not been a factor at all times this afternoon. Later today, the few clouds we are seeing right now should move out and skies should stay clear the rest of the evening. We'll also see another drop of temperatures below freezing, but it won't be as cold as the 20 degrees we saw earlier today. Tomorrow, skies will remain clear and we'll see an increase in temperatures heading into the afternoon. Highs should reach the mid-60s before sunset and overall it should be a nice day. Heading into Wednesday, we'll see another day with lots of sun and even warmer temperatures. Temperatures on Wednesday should climb into the mid-70s and we'll continue to see mild conditions heading into the evening. Thursday is also shaping up to be another nice day with clear skies and temperatures again topping out in the 70s. Highs will be slightly cooler than Wednesday, but it will be another nice afternoon. Overnight temperatures on Thursday should only drop into the 40s, keeping temperatures mild through the evening. Looking ahead, another cold front could be headed our way at the end of the week, with more gusty winds in the forecast through the weekend. As we mentioned earlier, the Texas Tech football team had a rough weekend on the road, but they weren't the only Tech team making headlines. On Saturday, the men's basketball team took on the Northern Colorado Bears at the United Supermarket Serena. The Bears came into Lubbock with a three-win record, but they left Lubbock with their first loss. With a final score of 93-62, sophomore Jarrett Culver put up 20 points, followed by freshman Kyler Edwards, who made every basket he shot and ended up with 19 points. Saturday's win extends the Red Raiders' winning streak to six after starting play at the beginning of the month. Next up, the men will take on the Memphis Tigers this Saturday, the Hoop Hall Invitational Tournament in Miami. Tip-off is set from 1.30 p.m., and you can watch the game on ESPNU. The Red Raiders won the only ones to score a win in the USA on Saturday. The Lady Raiders also improved their record after defeating Houston Baptist 82-76. Sophomore Brittany Brewer had a huge day on the court with 34 points and 13 rebounds. Freshman Crystalyn Carr also left her mark on the game, scoring 19 points. Saturday's win improves the Lady Raiders' record to 4-1 for the past time since 2015-2016 season. The women will finish off a six-game offstand with a matchup against Stephen F. Austin on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Football wasn't the only team to finish off their season this weekend. Red Raider Volleyball also played in their final regular season contest, but unfortunately it ended in a loss. Tech took on Iowa State Friday night on the road, but the Cyclones took home the win. Three sets to zero, the loss ends Volleyball's big 12 season with a 6-10 and 10 record. But overall, the Red Raiders finished with a 17-13 and 13 winning record, with this year's records, the team now has had back-to-back -back winning seasons for the first time since 2001. With the semester wrapping up, this is the last big week for activities on the Tech campus. With that in mind, here's a look at today's MCTV events calendar. Tomorrow, the Office of the President will hold their final fall office hours with the President from 2 to 3 p.m. 
office hours with the president is a chance for any tech student to, to stop by the administration building and have the chance to share their thoughts with President Lawrence Kuvenik. Tomorrow's office hours will be held in the president's office located in suite 115 in the admin building. If you cannot make it to tomorrow's office hours, there will also be two more sessions held in the spring. The president's office isn't the only group on campus looking for our student input. Another organization representing the entire student body is also asking for your thoughts on an important issue. On Thursday, the Student Government Association will be holding a town hall meeting in the sub ballroom at 7 p.m. for this week's town hall. The SGA will be holding a discussion regarding student mental health. Along with the discussion, attendees will also have a chance to learn tips on how to deal with the end of the semester stress. Thursday's town hall is open to all tech students. And on Friday, one of the biggest traditions of the year will officially kick off the Christmas season. The 60th annual Carol of Lights celebration will take place on Friday night in the Science Quad on the west side of Memorial Circle. Members of the Saddle Trams and High Riders along with the Masked Rider will kick off the event with the Torchlight Processional, followed by the singing of carols by the University Combined Choirs. At the conclusion of the ceremony, more than 25,000 holiday lights will be lit simultaneously throughout the entrance to campus. Carol of Lights kicks off at 6.30 p.m. and it's free and open to the public. So AD, did you enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday? It was a wonderful experience. I was able to spend some quality time with my family and friends. Awesome. What about you? It was good. I had to go to Houston, see my family, mm -hmm. had a lot of turkey, so it was a good time. That's great. <laughs> so that's all for today's edition of the MCTV Weekday Update. Thank you so much for joining us and be sure to check ttuhub.net every day for more news. We'll see you on Thursday. Thursday.